What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another Monday Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, we talk about the news topics that happened over the past week in the scale world of RC. This week, a bunch of topics. We'll jump right into them. We've got a bunch of topics from ProLine this week, so let's start with what's new first. ProLine released a Raptor body in the 12.3 inch wheelbase to fit the most popular wheelbase scale trucks. Good looking body, another Raptor option. You know, we've seen them lately for the Traxxas TRX4 and the longer 12.8 inch wheelbase. We've seen them for their heavy duty kits. So if you're a Raptor fan, but you don't mind seeing that solid axle under the front, this body is available now and I'll link it in the description below. ProLine also released the 1.9 KM3 tire in their Predator compound. They're calling this the red label, which correlates to BFG's sticky compound in the full-size world. So this is the Predator red label. This tire is going to be super sticky and that compound should really start to wear in and look like your real crawler tire over not too much time. And then we've got another topic from ProLine, but it's not about new stuff, it's about legacy items. And they've announced a bunch of new discontinued products. I'll put the link in the description below, but I'll go through some of them just to give you guys a heads up of what's on there. And if any of these are something that you're really looking for, you may wanna go pick some of them up before they're gone. The 1966 Chevy C10 clear cab only version. Hopefully that means that they'll still have the cab and bed combo, but the cab only is being discontinued. The 1981 Ford Bronco clear body. This one's being discontinued, which, which is kind of surprising to me, but I could see that maybe the sales were slow on it. The proportions were a little weird with the position of the rear fender wells in the body, but overall it was still kind of a cool body. Kind of sucks to see things like that go. This was the biggest surprise to me though, the 1985 Toyota Hilux SR5 cab only. Now again, probably still means that they'll have the cab and bed version, but the cab only option will be gone. There's a few different tires they're discontinuing, 2.2 all-terrain BFGs, the 1.9 and 2.2 BFG Baja tire will be gone as well. The Chevy Silverado body for the Honcho will be gone. That one was not offered with a cab and bed. So if you're a Silverado fan, you want a cab for your Honcho, better get it while it lasts. And a bunch of other things on there, including some boggers, some wheels, some Jeep bodies, just a bunch of stuff being discontinued. Go check out the link, see what's on there, and if any of that stuff is something you've really been looking for or thinking about getting a spare of, do it now. And next we have a timely release from Crawler Innovations. They just released a 2.6 inch foam for those J Concepts Fling King tires that I've been using. I put those tires on my TRX4 Mega Truck conversion and I hadn't glued the tires to the wheels yet and just got a set of those in time so that I didn't have to try and remove them from those wheels. These will be an awesome upgrade to the stock foams, really keep those tires to shape and do much better in the mud. I'll put a link to the Crawler Innovations page in the description below. A few weeks back, we talked about some possible new cars coming from Charisma, and we can finally see a few more details on those. They are 124th scale, which isn't necessarily as super exciting, but but they've got a Subaru Brat and a Coyote Pup. And these things look pretty standard 124 scale, nothing really groundbreaking. It almost looks like they may be sitting on one of the other Thunder Tiger or one of those other FTX brand chassis underneath. Can't 100% tell yet if it's just a rebrand with the Charisma name on it or not, but I'm sure more details will come in the future. But at this point, yeah, it doesn't look like it really broke the mold in 124 scale or anything like that. So if you're a fan of the small scale stuff, maybe it's worth taking a look at still. And lastly for the week, we've got one that's not scale off-road, but definitely cool and definitely scale. One RC Racing released a new 118th scale sprint car. Now this is still small scale, but sprint cars are always cool. And I just thought this one was done really well. Scale looks on it are killer. I haven't really looked into the overall quality or the design of it in general, but just the looks and the price tag at under 200 bucks, definitely appealing, cool looking nonetheless. So if you're a sprint car fan, absolutely go check this one out. I'll put all of the details to it in the description below. And as always, I posted up on social media looking for random questions to discuss during the Scale News Update, but I posted it late with not a lot of notice, so we should be able to run through them pretty quickly. The first question is, when are peak announcement times for RC companies, and do you anticipate any winter big releases? So peak times are, you know, before the holiday rush with Christmas, Black Friday, all that type of stuff. That's always a pretty big time for companies to try and put something out so that 
people will buy it for Christmas. A lot of times though, those are you know less expensive or stocking stuffer type items rather than a big dollar release. But after Christmas, after dad has bought all of the kids some toys and he's ready to buy something for himself, that is when we can start to see some big releases from companies, January, February, March, April. Those are peak times. I think that we probably go back and look at the scale news update during those times. We had tons of topics on pretty decent size releases. So we're coming into that season where we should start seeing a bunch more of these type things, but it's probably gonna be a slow build on those huge releases until after the new year. Next one says, if you win the drag race, what the scale builders guild gotta do as the loser? Or if scale builders guild wins, what do you gotta do? There's no award for racing cars on the internet, really. You know, we're doing it for fun, we're doing it for excitement. And, you know, so far, I think that we both got everything we could have expected out of this series. So, bragging rights and calling the other one a cheater, probably about all we're looking for. Next comment says, Predator Compound versus G8. Do you use different compounds for different times of the year, like a softer compound in cooler months versus a more firm compound in warmer months? I don't normally do that much changing around. When I did comp crawling, maybe I would have done things that were a little bit more drastic, like changing tires for warmer, or cooler temperatures. More likely I was changing foams for warmer, or cooler temperatures rather than tires. But for scale rigs, I don't really do that. I put a tire on there that I think looks good, and I go have fun. You know, the rigs are plenty capable. If I can't pull this line, I'll pull the one next to it. Just go out there to have fun. I'm not doing that much competing anymore, things like that. So it's just not like a huge concern of mine anymore. This question says, how about knuckles with camber? And this actually goes to a release that I hadn't talked about from the scale shop. He released knuckles for an AR60 or AR44, I can't remember which one, that actually had camber built in. And camber is where the top of the tire leans in towards the center of the vehicle or out if it's negative camber, things like that. But this actually takes and leans the tires in a little bit, kind of like the look if you have bad bearings in a regular solid axle or the look that you'll see a lot of times on IFS cars. Now, I've seen this done in the full-size world with cambered knuckles on solid axle rigs, and it's to aid in turning to try and have the solid axle rigs keep up a little bit better with the IFS rigs, specifically in Ultra 4 racing. Hasn't been something that really caught on in the full-size world, and I don't know that it'll really catch on in the RC world, but it's another interesting release, something that we haven't seen before this point other than when people tried to bolt non eight degree knuckles onto eight degree C hubs. But beyond that, something new that we saw in the market that we hadn't seen before. This question says, are there any good crawler tires that are larger than the 2.2 Hyrax? I'm building a Rancho and want the largest tires I can get. I think the biggest tires I can remember were the Proline Swamper XLs in 2.2. And I think that they were like a six inch tire or better, but if I'm not mistaken, they were on that discontinued list that I was going over today. So if you're looking for a super tall tire like that, run quick. This question says, what else can manufacturers do to be new and innovative in the crawler market other than what's already been done? You know, that's a that's a question that's it's hard to say. You know, you have to come up with the idea and then execute it. And doing things in a more scale nature is always something that I think is new and innovative you know trying to do it just that much better or make it look that much more realistic things like that a lot of companies though are just trying to create a part as inexpensive as possible and there's absolutely and obviously a market for that but those of you who really want to see the market pushed forward have to look at other companies that were willing to put a little bit more detail or time into these things to make them look better, perform better, and not just be a stock replacement part that was milled as efficiently as possible in aluminum. So I don't have the answer for that, but it's a very interesting question. Best crawler and upgrades price wise for someone new to the scene of scale comps. Man, if you're trying to get into scale comp, looking at what you can buy off the shelf is, is a tough one. If you're gonna try and get into scale competition, you're really gonna to have to dig in there, and price is gonna be a tough one to really try and be super conscious of. As the nature of competition goes, as the nature of competition goes, if you're trying to compete at a high level, it's gonna get expensive. Next question says, will you make a Paul Walker driver figure for the drag bull? Probably referring to the Fast and Furious quotes I keep putting before every drag bull video. Probably could find one to use 
the same time I'd feel bad just popping the head off one and then trying to screw it in. It just seems so weird to do that, but it's a possibility, not a bad idea either. But with that, we're gonna cut this scale news update off. I appreciate all of you guys for watching. I hope you have a fantastic week coming up. Thanks for all of your comments and views. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're not already. Make sure and hit that notification bell if you want to get the alerts for as soon as these videos go live. Thanks as always for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.